bit here, a little bit more tech. So now that we've covered most of the basics of um, transistors, specifically, more specifically, bipolar transistors, now we can move on to a little bit more advanced things and, and one of the most exciting circuits you can build out of um, simple transistors is a difference or differential amplifier circuit. And, um, so we just have a look at a simple implementation of such a thing and walk you through the basics and help you understand uh, when we get uh, later on into uh, the integrated version of it um, to understand it those a little bit better. So let's get into it. So this mess of chaotic wires is actually um, mostly <laughs> uh, the oscilloscope and the frequency generator and the power supply <laughs> leads. So um, the actual differential amplifier is this small circuit. It's two transistors and a bunch of resistors. And it actually looks like this. So this is the simplest differential amp or difference amplifier you can build. Um, it's got um, plus 15, minus 15 source voltage and um, two transistors and um, have a common um, base or a common emitter resistor um, 10k and this they usually call this the R tail and, and that's important to remember because in lots of differential circuitry they, all, they talk about the um, R tail or an implementation of that'll come up later as we move into more complex things. Um, anyway, so uh, what I've set up here is I've set up the rest condition. So the um, inputs, which are now designated as A and B, they are at ground potential, and this is the rest state of the output. Um, so the input is yellow and blue, and, uh, or the inputs are yellow and blue, and then um, the output is red. Anyway, let's take the um, input A, and we're just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to put it to plus 5 volts, and see what happens. Uh -huh. It goes up. Well, then if you take a quick look at the circuit diagram, we're activating this transistor. Basically opens up more, puts more current through here. Voltage goes up there, and then this closes, and then that pushes the output up. So, the B input. That's this yellow wire. Take that, and we put it, activate it. Oh, looks like the input goes down. So again, if we have a look at the diagram here. So now we are um, activating this one. And this one opens, puts more current through there, tracks this point down. And um, also then one could actually say the, the simplest thing that this is the so-called minus input. That's the plus input. You see this in many operational amplifiers. You have the minus input and the plus. So the minus being that it actually, yeah, as you see here, goes negative. So, let's see what happens when we activate both A and B. And here we see that it drops ever so slightly. And this um, actually should, theoretically speaking, if it's on, um, you activate both, si both sides, or you ground both sides, then basically the reference point should stay the same so it shouldn't vary because it should amplify the difference but since this is um, the simplest possible circuit of a differential amplifier plus there's you know the, the transistors are different you know there's errors in the resistors plus this is a horrible circuit <laughs> you, you won't get the exact. This is why um, we're going to be actually discussing and reviewing improvements to uh, to the circuit. And yeah, 
I'm, I'm looking into more advanced um, advanced options. But it gives you the basic idea that it, um, a differential ap amplifier should only um, react to differences between the um, inputs. And uh, if the, the same um, um, signal exists on both inputs, then it should, the output shouldn't react. Uh, should, they shouldn't be amplified, and, and the, uh, the amplifier shouldn't react to those, those types of things. So let's have a look a little bit of the simplistic AC operation. So it's single A and single B, 50 Hz. The output is pretty much nothing. Um, it's amplified up, amplified difference. So let's see what happens when we um, actually uh, change the input um, B, increase the voltage. See how it changes. So now the output is representing the difference between the two, between the channel A and channel B. So anyway, let's have a look at one of the other functions of differential amplifier, and that's the common mode rejection mode, um, which actually means that I'm going to actually show a circuit here that I'm using to feed two signals to the differential input. So one is the one kilohertz signal which goes into input A and then I'm introducing a disturbance frequency of 50 hertz into both channels. Now of course there's a bit of feed, a feed cross feed from here so this is not a perfect but it's a, like a general example. So if we um, pause the flickering so it can't trigger so well on those signals. And here we see the very prominent um, 50 Hz disturbance on basically both both of the channels and that's called common mode um, signal so it's uh, it's um, appear the same signal appears on both uh, A and B. And then he, um, what I superimposed is the 1 kilohertz signal on the um, first input. And what happens when it goes to the differential amplifier, interesting enough, is that it, um, as you see here, it's amplifying the 1 kilohertz signal very prominently, but it's not amplifying the um, 50 hertz disturbance as prominently. And taking into account that this, <laughs> this mass is far from a ideal um, differential amplifier, I think it's actually doing quite a good job. Um, take into account the circumstances it has to live with. <laughs> yep, also, um, yeah, added the um, couple of resistors on, on both terminals to um, get the um, DC voltage level to its default position. So, anyway, let's look at see how far we've got with a differential amplifier. So, basically, this is what it looks like on a block level. So you have some piece of circuitry that creates the differential analysis and it has a certain amount of amplification built into it usually. And then you have a actual dedicated amplifier which produces the gain and again it um, amplifies it even more. And then you just have a follower to um, decrease the output impedance. And um, sorry for the water damage but you, yeah, you can sort of count how much gain you get in total out of an operational amplifier, so that's a, like a gain of 1000. And we basically, in this circuit, we've pretty much seen um, this. So, oh, I hope you found this informative. Um, please consider subscribing. Um, hit the like button if you thought the video was worth it. Merch is available, or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, the links are in the comments. And um, all the contributions will go towards developing the channel and adding more projects and uh, I'll see you in the next one.